Hey everyone, so last week uh, I showed you a video of uh, my apartment, the one bedroom apartment in Manhattan. And uh, the beauty about living in this apartment in such a small space in New York City, it's made me reflect in what I look for in a house now. Because man, have my views completely changed as of like six years ago. Six years ago, I was like everyone else, where I was like, oh, bigger, better, huge lawn, blah, 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 you gotta have all this, all this empty space, just go big so you can put all your stuff in it. And now, I've really thought about what I look for in a space. So I just wanted to share that, uh, in case you are thinking about um, uh, small space living, uh, or, or, or downsizing or whatever. Just, just, just ideas for you to think about or, or what to look for. And you may not agree with me. Um, I'm just throwing stuff out there. So, uh, one is the kitchen. Um, if I had it my way, I would prefer an open style kitchen, meaning the kitchen's, uh, kind of like in the living room with like a little island kind of thing. Uh, I feel that that's great for guests. Um, a lot of times the kitchen that we have in our current apartment, what I don't like about it is if I am prepping food or whatever, I can't, I can't talk to anyone or everyone will migrate into the kitchen and I have no room. So, uh, if it's, if it's more of an open concept, uh, with the kitchen, um, I, I really prefer that. And, uh, I think that that's a great way to kind of do stuff in the kitchen, but also uh, keep an eye on your family, socialize with your family, um, or with guests uh, if, if, you have, if you're throwing a party or have guests in town. The only downside to that that I see is if you have a toddler and you want to block off something like the kitchen, that becomes a lot more difficult. So you may have to be very vigilant uh, when you're in the kitchen and you have small kids. But, you know, this may only be for like four years, uh, you know, when they're like an infant to, to four years. After four years, hopefully... Uh, um, it's not quite as big of an issue. So that is the only nice thing about our kitchen is we kind of gate it off for our toddler. So he, you know, we, we, we have very strict access when or, or when he cannot be in there. Now, as far as living room goes, I really like a big, spacious living room. Now, it doesn't need to be filled with stuff. Um, it's just that it, it, the and it doesn't have to be huge just so that I want it to feel open I want it to feel uh, inviting and have like it has like a tremendous amount of space uh, that's what that's what I gravitate towards to uh, for the living area and part of that is because that is the room for the most part I am mostly in so I want that to feel as decluttered and as nice as possible because that's the room when I'm home that I spend a lot of time in uh, or at least in my in my one bedroom apartment, that potentially could change if I got a house and I had access to more rooms. But but right now, um, that's what I look for. I want it to have sunlight. I just want it to be a very inviting and homey feeling. Now let's talk about bathroom. Uh, as far as bathroom goes, I think uh, most houses are completely correct. Like. Uh, my parents watch a lot of the, what is it, HGTV or whatever. It's the, the home improvement stuff. I'm sure a lot of people have seen them, um, where they have huge bathrooms. I mean, I'm talking ginormous bathrooms. And for me, uh, like if I've only got 900 square feet to work with, I do, I want to spend as little of that square footage on the bathroom. Hopefully, I'm not in the bathroom that often. The only time I'm in the bathroom that often is when my toddler has made me sick because I caught some horrible GI bug from daycare. Other than that, I'm hardly ever in the bathroom. It's a get in, get out, that's it. That should not require a lot of space. And why should I waste a lot of space? Space is precious. Why should I waste a lot of space on something that I'm not going to be hopefully in that room that often? Um, same with the shower, right? Shower, bathroom, all connected. Fantastic, right? I would not mind, I would like, uh, uh, one and a half baths, bathrooms. Sorry, one and a half bathrooms. And what I mean by that is, I only need one shower. One person can take a shower at a time, that's fine. Uh, it would be nice, um, at least for a family of, of four, I think, to have two toilets accessible at all times. Now, it's not a must, but that would be a nice luxury. And again, as long as it doesn't take up mu that much space, um, I think that that would be uh, a really good trade-off. 
Now let's talk about bedroom. Um, again, bedroom kind of falls into the bathroom category for me, uh, at least in the concept of I'm not in there that often, right? I don't want to be in the bedroom. The only time I want to be in the bedroom is when I have to sleep. Other than that, why be in the bedroom? Now, I know some people may turn their bedroom into an office and, and stuff like that. And uh, I, I, honestly, I think that's a great way to utilize space. Um, however, if I had my options, I would rather take a small bedroom than a huge bedroom. Okay, so I've got my small bedroom uh, and then that's it. If I had a big bedroom, then I would take that bedroom and kind of partition it so I would have a really, really small area for my sleeping quarters, and then maybe the rest of it I would turn into an office, if at all possible. In fact, uh, when my son gets older, like if I have a master bedroom and a small bedroom, I wouldn't mind giving my kid or kids the master bedroom, because to me that's kind of their area to go, because uh, you know, growing up I had my own bedroom, but it was kind of it was also my office. It was it was my only area. So for my kids, I would rather give them the larger space because uh, for them, it's their place that they can escape. For them, I expect it to be their bed, their office, their living quarters, um, their place to escape and, and, and kind of be alone. Um, for me, though, um, I just view it as just a simple place to sleep. Now, uh, as far as vertical space goes, sometimes I feel like, especially in our one-bedroom apartment, that we don't use the vertical space quite as well as we maybe should. Um, this is kind of unique to New York City. I think I think New York City apartments uh, tend to to have more vertical or more access to vertical space. Uh, I don't use it as nearly as well as I probably should, um, and I should probably look into to utilizing that space uh, more efficiently. All right, so that's pretty much it. This is just my quick random thoughts of what I look for in a house now. Uh, not that I'm looking to buy anytime soon or anything like that. But um, uh, what sparked this is, is one, showing you guys my apartment, and, and two, my sister is actually in the process of building a tiny house. So uh, we've had a couple discussions about this, and it's just fascinating, and uh, uh, seeing what other people's thoughts are about the subject. So um, if you are thinking about buying something, downsizing, or whatever, hopefully you found this video helpful, or at least give you ideas of things to, to really think about and ask yourself, especially when looking at space. And, and the more you shrink down uh, your size, uh, that your living quarters, I think this stuff matters even more. I think this topic, if you have 2,000 square feet to work with or 3,000 square feet to work with, this topic doesn't really matter to you or isn't as critical because you just have so much space. But once you start shrinking down that space and, and really utilizing that space efficiently, I think these topics become more and more important. So I just wanted to get the ball rolling, get you thinking about that, uh, especially if you're thinking about downsizing. Anyway, hopefully you found this video helpful. Thumbs up if you like it. Leave some nice comments. Leave some constructive criticism. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time.